Okay, so in this last section of our lecture, what we're going to do is uh, talk a little bit more about high-dimensional high analysis. And uh, in particular, I'm going to tell you uh, exactly how principal, comp principal components analysis works and I'll start to talk a little bit about the intuitions of um, how we can use it. So I showed you a preview of high-dimensional data and at least one example of where they've actually applied this analysis. Um, and so, uh, so let's go back and think about our data set, right? Here's our big data matrix. It's a block of numbers, um, and it has m measurements. So that's the dimensionality of our data set, and n samples. And here's the individuals that we can collect, right? So uh, what we're going to do is try to transform these measurements into some sensible space so that we can visualize the data. Okay, so what I'm going to do uh, is tell you a little bit about the definition, the mathematical definition of principal components analysis, and then we're going to draw some pictures to gain some intuition about it, and then next lecture we're actually going to dig a little bit deeper into the mathematics of how to compute it and what the numbers actually mean. Okay, so I know I promised we're going to do a high dimensional data set, but let's for a moment actually focus on something a little easier to visualize. Let's go back to that two dimensional data set. Okay? So here uh, is my data set. I only have two dimensions, so here's x1 and x2, right? And I have my data, and there are dots like the following. Okay, this is my scatter plot of my data here. Okay? Now, you look at this data, and if your first thought is it's not random. Right? Obviously, as x1 gets bigger, uh, and this is x1 here, not x2, as x1 gets bigger, x2 gets bigger as well. I have some kind of two measurements that I have. They're not random with respect to each other. They're actually positively correlated. Okay? So instead of explaining this data set using two measurements, I can ask the question, if I only had one dimension to explain this data, what would that dimension be? Okay? Now, so if you just kind of look at this picture and intuit it, you would say, oh, most of the variation in the data is along this direction. Okay? And in fact, that is the intuition behind uh, principal components analysis. This is one of the principal component directions of the data, so that if we transform the data by multiplying my data matrix, my now two-dimensional data matrix, by uh, the basis, my new basis of, of principal component one, and here's principal components two, so he's PC1 and PC2. What I would get is this exactly the same data in PC1 and PC2 coordinates, where now all of the variation lies in the PC1 direction, and less, a lot less of the variation lies in the PC2 direction. Exactly the same data. Okay, so what the PCA components are doing is this transformation. In this particular case, I've literally taken the data and rotated it. Okay, now because this is two-dimensional data, this is relatively easy to do, right? But let's go back now into the high-dimensional abstraction of data that has m measurements instead of just two, right? So the way that we can quantify this transformation and try to solve for the direction where these principal components that explain most of the variance data lies is by computing an object called the covariance matrix of my data matrix X. Okay? So here I have my big data matrix X. I have the transpose of the data matrix X, which literally means indexing it backwards. Right? I'm going to take the mirror image of this data matrix, and instead of having an M by M matrix, it's going to be an M by N matrix. That's X transpose here. This is the covariance matrix. And what I'm going to do is take the eigen decomposition of this covariance matrix. Okay? Now, if I did this, I'm going to end up with some eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And what I can do is look at the eigenvalues and see how big they are. And I'm going to order the eigenvectors based on 
the, 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 the magnitude of the eigenvalues. So I'm going to take my w and order these eigenvectors by magnitude of their corresponding eigenvalues. Okay? And what that's going to do for me is I'm going to get a set of directions in m dimensional space in order of largest variance explained to smallest variance explained. Right? So in this particular case, what I'm claiming to you is that if I took this data matrix, this 2 by n data matrix, computed x transpose x, took the eigen decomposition of that, I would end up with, in this case, a 2 by 2 covariance matrix. So I would have two eigenvalues and two eigenvectors. One of them is going to be bigger. And the eigenvector that corresponds to the larger eigenvalue is going to be PC1. That's going to be what it is. All right? And so you should keep in mind this kind of geometric interpretation of principal components analysis. It's a little hard to visualize this in higher dimensions. So we can probably do it with an ellipsoid of dots in three dimensions, but in much higher dimensions than that, it gets really difficult to visualize. Um, so there's a couple of special features um, of PCA that's uh, important to note, right? Um, TCA, by definition, will give you these directions in order of percentage of variance explained, right? This is actually a really, really nice feature because it means that if I had to pick three, the top three are always the best ones to pick in terms of variance explained. I will always do better um, trying to I will always do better trying to, uh, trying to explain the data based on the first three principal components rather than any other three principal components. Um, so the other thing that's kind of nice is that by construction, every single one of these principal components is orthogonal. Um, in this particular case, you can visualize it in 2D because these two directions are going to be at right angles from each other. And if I had a third one, it would have to come out of the board because it would have to be orthogonal to both of the previous ones and so on and so forth. So even if you had a really, really high dimensional space and you compute a PCA, every single one of those PCs is guaranteed to be at right angles with every other one. And that's also really nice because, again, if you are trying to build a model based on uh, the projection of your data into PC space, you're guaranteed that each of those dimensions are completely uncorrelated and orthogonal to each other, which is a nice feature to come back later. Okay? I know this is a little abstract, right? I just wanted to tell you briefly what PCA is and give you a little bit of intuition about how to visualize it. And this is going to be the topic of the, of, the, of the following lecture as well. We're going to delve a little bit deeper into how to compute it and what it means.